Hello everyone, welcome to the AP Calculus A, B, and BC review series. Uh, there are going to be 10 total videos, one for each unit in BC. If you're an AB student, uh, you only need to watch the first eight videos because the last two are BC only. And there are a few topics here and there that are also BC only. Uh, but this first unit is just limits and continuity. That's both AB and BC. And um, it's just the fundamentals of calculus, what you need to know uh, to actually succeed in calculus. Right. Um, and we're going to start off with a bit of content review, uh, just reviewing the important parts of the unit. And then we're going to solve a few practice problems together. So let's get started. First of all, what is a limit? A limit is basically that a value that the function approaches. And you write it as limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l, uh, where l is the value of the function. And there's a few ways you can think of it. First, graphically, uh, if you have the graph of a function, and let's say you want uh, the limit as x approaches 2, uh, what you're going to do is look at the, the graph and see what does the function approach. That's basically what a limit is, intuitively speaking just on each side, what value does the function approach? You can also do it with the table. You're given uh, values, um, x values close to the a value, let's say 2 again. Um, you're given 1.9, 1.99, and so on. And you're given the function values uh, at those points. You can see if they meet together at a certain point. And if so, that point is the limit L. Uh, and I kind of hinted at this with both these examples, they have to meet at a certain point for the limit to exist. You can have one side of the limit going to negative two and the other going to positive three. That, that means the limit won't exist. And how we write that is with one-sided limits. We say limit as x approaches a minus, that's the left uh, hand limit, must be equal to the limit as x approaches a plus the right hand limit. And that's equal to L. And if these both are equal to a constant value, then that means the original uh, limit, the two-sided limit is equal to that constant value. So you can uh, find limits graphically, numerically, so using a graph or a table, or you can do it analytically. And we're going to be mainly focusing on analytically uh, with properties of limits. So first of all, uh, the limit as x approaches a of any constant is just going to be that constant itself. And you can extend this a bit. If you're multiplying a function by a constant c, uh, it's going to, you can just take off the constant, and then you have limit um, of the f function. The reason why I'm just doing limit of the f function lf instead of just l is because we're going to be talking about another function g here when we're talking about other properties. Uh, but lf is just what the limit of f of x approaches. Uh, so like I said, we're going to be talking about combining functions. First of all, if you were to add or subtract them, so plus or minus, uh, it's just going to be LF plus or minus LG. You just add or subtract the entire limits. Uh, you have limit as X approaches A of the product of them, uh, F of X times G of X. And that's going to be equal to LF times LG, just the product of the limits. Pretty straightforward there. And as you might imagine, uh, the quotient of them is just going to be equal to uh, the quotient of the limits. And the final one, uh, limit as x approaches a of f of x to the power of n. You're taking it to a power. It's just going to be the uh, limit to the power of n. So these you can basically use on any algebraic function, uh, like any polynomial rational function, things like that. Uh, an interesting consequence of limits is called the squeeze theorem. And that basically says if you have a function uh, g of x such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, for all values of x in the domain, that means that uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x, which is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x. And this seems kind of obvious, but basically what it's saying is that... Um, you're squeezing the middle function from both the top and bottom to make an estimate of the middle function. And this allows us to find uh, the limit of two trigonometric functions, limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x. Now you might look at that and think, well, that's gonna be zero over zero. That means it's undefined. Not really, and this is a common theme throughout calculus. The limit of zero over zero is not necessarily undefined. There are some ways we can um, you, do things to manipulate it and actually solve for it. This one's going to be equal to one. You can use the squeeze theorem to prove that. Uh, another one is the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x over x. And that's going to be equal to zero. 
Okay, that's the first major part of this unit. The second one is continuity. It's limits and continuity. Continuity is basically saying that a graph can be drawn without lifting the pencil. Uh, and the main three uh, criteria for continuity, you have to check all three of these, is that the function exists at that point. Uh, the second criteria is that the limit exists at that point. And we talked about this before. Um, it basically says that the one-sided limits exist. And the third criteria is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the function value at um, f of x. And this, is, uh, this basically says the function exists, the limit exists, and those both are equal to each other. Um, and there's three main types of discontinuities that you can encounter. Uh, discontinuities is basically where a function is not continuous. One's called an infinite discontinuity. Um, we like to think of that as asymptotes in algebra, but it's basically uh, where this is a vertical asymptote. We'll get into that in a bit. But um, this is where the function kind of diverges. It can also even be like that, uh, ignoring the top part. It doesn't really diverge, but it just approaches infinity. Uh, and so it's not defined at that value. Another one is a removable discontinuity. That's basically a hole in the graph. Um, and you may or may not have another point located away from the graph. Uh, the reason it's removable is because you can easily get rid of that discontinuity by just moving this function point upwards towards the um, actual, like the limit of the function. And final, uh, finally, we have a jump discontinuity, which is similar, uh, except instead of just being a point, the graph continues on from that point. So it's like you're skipping a few steps, you're jumping up or jumping down, uh, depends on which. And one interesting thing is that all polynomial, rational, exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions are always continuous at all points in their domain. Keyword, at all points in their domain. Rational functions are not defined for some values, and so they're not continuous at those points. But for all points in their domain, they are continuous. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about limits um, and connect them with what we learned about in Algebra 2, asymptotes. Um, asym a vertical asymptote, like we said just before, uh, is when the limit is infinity. So you have limit as x approaches a of f of x is plus or minus infinity uh, because it's just going towards infinity or negative infinity. And sometimes you might write it as d and e but approaches infinity or d and e but approaches negative infinity. Uh, that's technically the right way to write it, but on an MCQ question, you can just write this. Um, it's not like technically correct but because nothing can equal infinity, uh, but it's a good way of like representing um, what the uh, vertical asymptote means. Horizontal asymptote, on the other hand, is the limit at infinity. Uh, so you can actually go plus or minus infinity again, um, and this is equal to some value b. That's going to be the horizontal asymptote. Uh, and we'll get into this a bit later um, as well on how to uh, identify horizontal asymptotes and everything. Uh, you should remember that from pre-calculus, actually, um, how the power of the numerator and denominator uh, mean there's a certain horizontal asymptote. As. Uh, so just make sure to review that. You might need to use that in calculus. And finally, the intermediate value theorem, the IVT, basically says that if f of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, uh, such that f of a is less than a value m, which is less than f of b, uh, there is a value a is less than c is less than b. So you're looking at c such that f of c is equal to m. Uh, and a nice graph is a good way to visualize this. If you have uh, this as a function, and um, let's say your values are a and b here, uh, a value m anywhere between those f of a and f of b, there's going to be at least one value of the uh, one x value such that the function at that point is m. So if this is continuous, though, if it's continuous on the closed interval. So pretty important thing. Um, some FRQs ask a bit about that. Some MCQ questions ask about, about that. So keep that in mind. OK, that's it for a content review. We have a few practice problems that we can go through now. First one is just find the limit. Um, this is kind of reviewing what we did in pre-calculus about finding limits at uh, infinities, or in other words, finding the horizontal asymptote. Uh, so one way you can do this, if you just plug in infinity, that won't really work. Uh, what you can do, though, is uh, take the denominator. You have square root of x squared minus 4. You can rewrite that. You can take out the x squared. 
Uh, so make it square root of x squared times square root of 1 uh, minus 4 over x squared. And the reason we're doing this is because now this x squared becomes absolute value of x times square root of 1 minus 4 over x squared. And remember, we still have that numerator 3x. Uh, and so if you look at negative infinity, uh, this becomes a negative number. This becomes a positive number. So it actually, the x's cancel out. And uh, you still have a negative, though. So it's going to be negative 3 uh, is your answer for this question. The limit um, is going to be negative 3. OK, this second question. Um, it's also about limits. It gives us this function instead of a um, equation. Like I said, there's multiple different ways of looking at things. Uh, you can do it a analytically, um, graphically, or numerically. This one specifically is going to be graphically. Uh, so it says the graph of function f is shown. Uh, which of the following statements is or are true? So limit as x approaches 4 from the left-hand side. Um, is that equal to 5? Well, if you're going from the left-hand side, that is equal to 5. So, yes, this is true. Limit of x, uh, limit as x approaches 4 of f of x equals 2. Well, the function value is 2, but the limit is what the function actually approaches. That's still going to be 5 here, even though the function is not 5 at that point. The limit approaches um, 5, and so the limit is going to be 5, not 2. So this one's wrong. x equals 4 is not in the domain of f. So there's a bit of uh, double negatives going on here. You have to actually understand what this is saying. But it's basically saying that the function is not defined at x equals 4. Well, it is defined. There is that point. It's just not continuous. And so this one's wrong um, as well. F of uh, x equals 4 is in the domain of f. And so the only uh, correct or the true statement is number 1. And this last problem is about continuity. The other big thing we talked about, for va what value of k is the function g of x continuous at x equals 3? Well, we know it's con uh, continuous. If the limit, um, first of all, the function exists, we know that's true because x uh, exists at negative 3. That is part of the domain. Um, second thing, the limit exists. So we want the one-sided limits to be the same. Uh, and the third part is that the limit is equal to the function. In this case, that is going to be met if the limits limit actually exists, because the way we find there's no like separate x equals three uh, value for this, right? Um, the way we find out the value of the function is by finding this limit um, at x equals three. So the all we care about now is the second condition that the one sided limits are the same. So you do limit as x approaches three um, of x squared plus five should be equal to limit as x approaches 3 uh, of 2x minus k. Um, you can write a step before this, limit as x approaches 3 minus of g of x should be equal to limit as x approaches 3 plus of g of x. And then you can write this based on that because this is the minus and plus um, functions. Uh, both of these are polynomials, so you can just directly plug it in. Um, you have 3 squared plus 9, not, uh, 3 squared plus 5, 9 plus 5 is 14. And we want that to be equal to this. You just plug in 3, you get 6 minus k. And so you want k to be equal to negative 8. You just solve for k. Uh, and so for it to be continuous at x equals 3, k has to be negative 8. Okay, and that's it for this video. It's a relatively short one because unit 1 is pretty short. Uh, we reviewed limits and continuity, and then we did a few practice problems. Uh, be on the lookout for our next video, which is about differentiation, just introducing it, uh, the definition and the fundamental properties.